Today we're going to look at welding defects in plastic samples. They look very different to normal metallic welds and it's always good to have a look before you're thrown into an exam and maybe don't understand the way that it can be different. So today we're looking at welding defects and in particular how the welding defects will look in plastic samples, especially those that you will see in your C-SWIP examinations. First thing to, to go through is maybe the difference between defects and imperfections. In general, defects may cause failure of a weld. That, of course, can be catastrophic. You know, a, a pressure vessel can explode and kill somebody or we may lose a, an oil rig or a valuable bit of equipment. Generally, we look at defects as being items which are rejectable to the standard. And an imperfection is something that could be in the base metal or the weld metal, but could be acceptable or rejectable. So as a, as a brief look at an acceptance criteria, here is a cutout from 5817. And you can see along that, that you have a identification in accordance with ISO 6520. So this gives every defect a individual serial number. You get a description and a sketch of each of the defect types. Sometimes this is a sketch, sometimes it's just a, a bit of wording. The sketches do help you identify what type of defect you're looking at. And in accordance with 5817, you have three quality levels. So this would be B, C, and D. B being the more stringent. If you see down there, there's a lot of non-permitted, uh, where as we head towards D, it gets a little bit easier. So here's a cross-section of our weld. This is a macro section, so a macro is good for looking at overall weld geometry and welding defects. It normally happens at around 5 to 10 times magnification as a maximum. And we're not looking at grain structure here, only the overall quality of the weld metal. So here we have the weld metal. We can see the parent material and we can identify the heat affected zone. So this is the part of the material which was heated above its critical transformation temperature, normally around 720, 723 degrees. Uh, it goes through a physical change. So it looks different in a macro, but we can't see what that change is because we're not doing a microscopic examination. Around that, we can identify the welding tools then these welding tools are going to be the areas of high stress concentration, even in a weld which is defect-free, such as this one. So the first defect we're going to talk about here is underfill. And as you can see in this area, we've got a, a weld metal that hasn't completely covered the uh, width of, of the weld. You can see it definitely pulls in. At this point, it becomes narrower. If we have a look further along the weld, this is a correct weld width for this joint. But we can see in, in a couple of places, going along the welds, pulling in narrow, and is underfilling the joint. Our second defect is lack of interrun fusion. Here, we're looking at a weld which has a split cap. And really, what we're looking for is the area where these two runs joined together and if we have a, a sort of a go around and see and try to see if anything is sticking out as potentially not really been fused well together we've got a stop start here which is a little bit proud at this point it doesn't look too bad here in in real life without the the shadow uh, connecting but what I can start to see are some slight areas where I can get me my nail in and they're very sharp. They're not very big, but they are sharp. There's there's one there. Uh, these are on this sample are, are quite small. But we're looking for to see if we've got a nice smooth blend between the runs. Here we can see an area which 
the the top weld starts to become a bit ropey and that isn't isn't very very well we've potentially got you know a non smooth transition between between the two runs effect is a lack of sidewall fusion and underfill so here we've got particularly at the ends of plates where you don't have a uh, a run on run off plate it becomes more difficult to complete the weld at the end so we can see the weld actually finishes just before the end of the plate and we miss the sidewalls because of that so in most weld inspection exams you'll be asked to call up two defects both the underfill because the joint hasn't been complete and the fact we've got a lack of sidewall fusion now on this joint here we've got a lack of sidewall both on the top and the bottom plate because we're missing the weld metal it's easy to miss the fact that the lack of sidewall fusion is on the top and the bottom especially in your reports what you want to be able to do is make sure you count both sides but you've only got one underfill area so looking at undercut what we're looking for is anything which has melted the parent material but has left this nick type defect in its in its position normally we're trying to measure a length a depth and a sharpness to it so most standards will say uh, that no defect is allowed to be sharp but they will give varying acceptance criteria for its length and depth depends on you know, if you're in static or severe cyclic sort of loading conditions so try to make sure you get all three measurements length depth and sharpness and the best way for sharpness is just to get your nail and see if you can click your nail into the defect if you can then we can say it's sharp slag inclusions are likely to sit on the side walls where you've either got a lack of sidewall fusion or a, um, a severe bit of undercut on plastic samples it's quite difficult to see and I'm struggling to really get the camera to catch the slag inclusions on these samples but you can see here we've got the weld metal coming round we've got the base material but we have this little sort of inclusion this this bit that doesn't look like it's part of the weld metal or part of the parent material uh, it's sitting on the the toe of the weld which is a good place to catch slag i would also look for it at any ends of welds or anything like that to see if anywhere that something can get stuck and get caught in position